All right, we're back with an underestimate or a lower sum. In this case, it's given by using left endpoints. So again, to reorient ourselves, y equals x squared, two, we're looking for the area bounded by the curve, the x-axis and x equals zero and x equals two as the endpoints. We want an underestimate, so because it's an increasing function, we know that we have to use the left endpoint. So this will be the first rectangle, it's the degenerate rectangle, and then using this as the height of the next one, we're going to get basically just that region if we use left endpoints. So the width again is given by b minus a over n. This is our delta x in some circles. 2 minus 0 over n will yield 2 over n just as, as we had before. The height of each of these spots is going to be given by this formula, a plus delta x times, now remember that because it's a left endpoint, it's going to have to be multiplied by i minus 1 because we have to shift our index over by 1 to start at the left endpoint. i equals 1 would start here, but we need to start at 0, so we have to do i minus 1. So here, let's plug in some numbers. This is just 0, this is just 2 over n. And then times i minus 1 would just yield 2 over n times i minus 1. 2 over n times i minus 1. Now, this is all being evaluated with an f. f was the function x squared. So if I were to take this and square it, I would get the output value at that point. So here we have 2 times i minus 1 over n, the quantity squared. If we distribute the square, we get 4, because 2 squared is 4, over n squared. And then if we multiply this out or square it, we get i squared minus 2i plus 1, which is right here. So now area, again, ignore the limits for now. If we use n subdivisions, it will be the summation from i equals 1 to n of the height of the rectangle, which is given by this expression we found right here, times the width of the expression, or width of the rectangle, which is given by this expression found up here. Now, I want you to pause the video and, and observe the difference between the height here and the height given by the right endpoint. This is the marginal annoyance that I was talking about up here. That it, it, It's a bit more annoying because you have more terms in the left endpoint height than the right endpoint height. This sort of gets right to the point right away. Here, it, again, it's not that it's impossibly difficult, but it's just more work because now you have to distribute the four and then yada, yada, yada. So here, um, what we can do is recognize that two times four is going to give us an eight. And just like before, that's a constant. So we can move or push that constant out using the scalar multiple property. The denominator is n squared times n, which is really n cubed. So I can pull that out as well because it doesn't depend on our counter. So if I take the four n squared n and two out, I'm just left with i squared minus two i plus one, and that stays in here. Now at this stage, you can recall that this could be broken up. I'm just breaking this up, not the whole expression. But this can be split up into summation of i squared minus summation of 2i uh, plus summation of 1 using the sum and difference rules. And then the answers for i squared can be found with this formula. The sum for 2i can be found by this formula. And the sum for 1, the constant is just c times n, the constant times n, so it's just going to be n by itself. And again, without knowing the formula for the summation of i squared, which is this expression, th there's no way to solve this, solve this question. You can't go from here to the answer unless you know this formula. You can't go from 2i to here unless you know the formula for i. Uh, this requires then us to convert all of these into a single denominator or a common denominator. So this has a denominator of 6. I'm going to keep this as it is. I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3 so that the denominator becomes 6. I'm going to multiply this by 6 over 6 so that the denominator becomes 6. So here you see 6n over 6. If I multiply this by 3 over 3, 2 times 3 will be 6, and then the rest stays the same. 
Here, I just multiply this out. And in fact, I cheated. I just copy pasted the answer I had from right here because I had simplified it earlier. I don't need to multiply this out yet another time. That will just go right there. 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n all over 6. Once we have common denominators, I can write a single fraction with a 6 in the denominator and then subtract the 6n uh, times n plus 1, add the 6n, which gives us this expression on top. At this stage, we can combine like terms. The 2n cubed doesn't have a compatriot, so that just comes along. 3n squared minus 6n squared will be negative 3n squared. Uh, the negative 6n plus 6n will cancel out, leaving behind just n. So that goes there. So we're left with this. We can distribute the 8 in here and the 6 into the n cubed. And if we do, we get something very familiar. We have 16n cubed minus 24n squared plus 8n over 6n cubed. This would be the sum using n subdivisions. So if you wanted two subdivisions, plug in two, you get your answer. If you have five subdivisions, plug in five into this formula, you get your answer. If you have an infinite number of subdivisions, well, only machinery we have to do that is limits. So hopefully, again, you recognize why these limits are here. Because at the very end, we have to push these n values off to infinity and see what this answer is going to be. Degrees are the same of the polynomials on top and bottom. So we just take the leading coefficients, 16 over 6 or 8 over 3. Now, you might say, well, what the heck? Why is it that the overestimate and the underestimate are the same? Pause the video, try to think about that yourself. Why is it that both these answers turned out to be the same, 8 over 3? Hopefully you'd had a chance to think about it. And the reason why they're both identical is because the number of subdivisions is being pushed off to infinity. The lower sum will be an underestimate, and it will get better and better and better. The estimate will keep getting refined as the number of subdivisions blows up. So... This is not to say that the, the lower sum is exactly that. The lower sum and the upper sum are approaching 8 over 3 or 16 over 6 because that's a limiting value. Remember, a limit doesn't care about what happens at a number. It's the number that you're approaching. So both the upper sum and the lower sum are approaching 8 thirds. Neither of them are exactly 8 thirds. The overestimate will always be over 8 thirds and sort of come down to it the underestimate will always be below 8 thirds and come up to it. You, you're refining the estimate by taking the limit as n approaches infinity. As the, the number of rectangles goes to infinity, both the upper sum and the lower sum converge onto whatever the actual true sum is. So that's why they're both the same. Do I have enough time to do the next one? No. All right, we'll see you in the next video.